Let's have a think about how we can inject randomness into each of the different trees in our random forest. We've already talked about one way, random data samples. We originally talked about bootstrapping. Bootstrapping leaves us with around about two-thirds of the different observations making it into our tree, just a different two-thirds each time. Instead of doing bootstrapping, we could simply choose at random a certain percentage of our rows to end up in the tree each time. In H2O, this is called the sample rate. And the default for the sample rate is around about 0.62, which is what you would get if you were doing bootstrapping. But how else can we inject randomness into the trees? Well, we've talked about selecting randomly from the rows of data, from the observations, from the houses, but how about we select randomly from the features? In each tree, we use a different subset of the features. Maybe in one tree, we'll use living an area, living area, and in another tree, we won't. We'll use something else like number of kitchens. That will certainly inject a lot of randomness and decorrelate the trees, which is what we want. The percentage of columns that we select at random to go into each tree is called in H2O the curl sample rate per tree. Not really surprising. And you can also have within trees, you can have a column sample rate so that at each split, a different subset of the variables are used for making the split. Given that we have a subset of data and a subset of columns at each node, and we're about to make a split, how do we make the split? Well, if you're doing ordinary random forests, what we would do is we would find the optimal split of all the features that are available to us. Go through each feature and figure out, does that improve the loss function? And for those that do, find the split and the find the variable and the split of that variable that reduces the loss function most and split accordingly. We could inject extra randomness into our trees by injecting some randomness in actually how we create this split. Rather than going through all possible splits, we do this in a particular random way, which I won't go into right now. Besides these two parameters, sample rate for the columns and call sample rate per tree for the, for the features, there are of course some other parameters for the model. First of all, there's n trees, the number of trees that you're going to grow in your, in, in your random forest. When we did this in R before, we grew just two trees and we took the average, but why would you only grow two trees? If it works for two, surely it's going to work better for 10 or 50 or 500. In random forests, we typically grow 100, 200 trees, as m one or 200 trees, as many as you need to get the maximum benefit from the averaging. And that is something you can test on your validation. Grow a large number of trees and see when your validation curve stops improving. I'll show you that in a minute. Each tree can have a maximum depth and a minimum number of rows that have to be in a leaf before you can split. It is worth paying some attention to these parameters because whilst the idea of random forests is to get rid of the variance problem within your trees, there's no point in having it there just for fun. And if these individual settings can get rid of variance at the individual tree level without reducing performance, we might as well do it. 